Today I wanted to discuss some of the stipulations and boundaries that I had to go between when I was trying to find my first calves to get started in the beef business. Um, I've been managing cows for four years now and uh, basically my job's just been to finish them. Um, make them fat, send them to the butcher. That's been my job. So having these young ones around, that's all new to me. So I've had a lot of learning to do and I still have a ton to learn. Um, but today I want to share with you the little bit I've learned so far. These two casts were purchased off of a Facebook uh, group selling livestock here in Ohio. Um, they actually happened to be, both of these animals were about 10-15 miles from this farm. So it worked out really well. Um, when I first went and seen this girl, which is three months now, at the time she would have been a month old. Um, it said she was on milk replacer and a little bit of grain. Uh, I seen the grain because we're a grass-fed operation and that kind of turned me against her so I just kept on moving. Well, the prices have dropped on cattle here in the last month or two and they're just popping up all over Facebook. So I keep seeing more and more on grain, on grain. So I started asking questions to the lady we lease the land from who has raised calves. They were Jersey calves, but either way, she has raised them. And she told me, which I did not understand this at the time, all calves without a mom need to be fed grain. And the reason for that being is, is their rumen and their stomach helps them break up the grasses and the hay is not fully developed. So the grain is a substitute that the stomach can handle and at the same time fills them up, gives them fat and energy and all that good stuff. So at the same time as feeding the milk replacer a little bit of grain, you should also offer a nice leafy uh, hay. You don't want a clover hay, you don't want something real rich. A nice first cutting hay. Um, that's worked out well for me. So I went to my local feed mill and I started asking questions to uh, what kind of grain he could get for cattle, if he could get anything organic or non-GMO and what I end up coming up with was this Sweet Country Feeds. Non-GMO, soy free, 14% all stock pellet. I am very impressed with the ingredients in this. Let me read a couple of them. You got a non-GMO dehydrated alfalfa meal, a non-GMO wheat middlelands, non-GMO ground flaxseed, non-GMO ground oats, salt, calcium, palm oil, all kinds of goodies in here. A miley. So the cows love it. Makes me equally happy not to see corn, not to see soy. That makes me very, very proud. It looks almost like a rabbit pellet. Um, you can see she knows I have it now, so she's not going to leave me alone until I let her have it. So we'll, we'll let her go ahead and have some of that while I finish this video. So... The other kind of, the other things I've ran into along the way of looking for calves, and keep in mind, all this is based off being organic or grass-fed here on the farm. Um, vaccines. Are vaccines allowed? Are they not allowed? Um, depending on who you ask, they say, yeah, they're allowed. But then you ask somebody else, and they say, no, they're not allowed. So to get an actual straight answer is about impossible. So from there, I went to the NOP website, the National Organic Program, and uh, started reading about vaccines. From what I'm gathering, they allow some of them, they don't allow others. It's very, very confusing. Um, at this point, this calf, or that six-month-old calf, has not had any vaccines at all. Is that a good thing? I don't know. Is it going to jeopardize their future? I don't know. Um, I've seen in the chicken world, you know, you can raise them completely non-medicated and not have any issues as long as you provide a good quality feed, keep the manure picked up, which we do uh, pasture raised chickens so they're moved daily, they're always on clean pasture, and keep their water dishes clean. You don't have any problems. Is it the same with cattle? I don't know. If you have any information that you could give me, I would appreciate it. I'm kind of on the fence to whether I want to give either one of these vaccines. But 
to keep in mind, they are going to be part of my breeding operation in the future. So maybe it would be a good thing. Um, but that's a little bit I've learned about vaccines and uh, feeding a little bit of pellet or grain until the rumen in the stomach gets fully developed. Um, they're on their last bag now. There's like that much in a metal trash can. So in the next few days, they're going to run out and be fully on hay. Um, she's put on quite a bit of weight here in just the last two weeks. She's been off of the bottle since, uh, wow, about a month now. And, uh, and then from the bottle there, I've been giving her a little bit of grain and, or a little bit of the pellet in the morning and a little bit of the pellet in the evening. You're supposed to do uh, one to two percent of her body weight. So, you know, in the morning she gets about a pound and a half. In the evening she gets about a pound and a half. Three pounds a day. And then the rest of the day she's on hay. So, it's worked out really well. She's growing. She's getting bigger. Um, she's ornery as ever. So, must be doing something, right? So, I hope this video has shined a little bit of light on... Uh, buying calves if you're organic or grass-fed. Um, if you have anything to add to it, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe, it'd be appreciated. And thanks for watching Grazing Acres Farms. Hi, huh, Miley. Um, I was afraid when, when, you know, when I relate corn into, into this feeding upper, I was afraid. I'm still a little bit unclear which vaccines are allowed. To the tough little girl. That being said, maybe vaccines are a good idea. So, gosh, damn it. I started over, Miley.